Hi, let's talk about the osteology of the larynx and pharynx. So the skull consists of two parts. There's the cranium, which is everything that I'm circling here. And below that and articulating with the cranium would be the mandible. It's the worst drawn mandible that I have ever produced, but you, uh, you, you get the, the picture of that. Now, turning our attention to the cranium, uh, we have two views of it. Uh, to the right here, this would be the inferior view of the basic cranium. And to the left is a left lateral view. So with respect to the inferior view on the right uh, here, uh, we can see the medial plate of the sphenoid bone so i'll highlight that um, right there and right there and at its inferior most part we have the hamulus of the pterygoid so looking um, at the left lateral view here we can see just a little bit of the hamulus projecting there that's going to be an important part of the cranium with respect to the attachment of the superior pharyngeal constrictor muscle. The superior pharyngeal constrictor muscle has four parts to it, the pterygopharyngeal, the bacopharyngeal, the mylopharyngeal, and the glossopharyngeal. And each of these parts has a prefix in its name that indicates uh, where the anterior edge of that muscle attaches to. And in the case of the medial pterygoid plate and the hamulus, the pterygopharyngeal part of the pharyngeal constrictor, the superior pharyngeal constrictor, um, is, is going to attach there. So there's actually going to be a line that comes down. This line uh, is uh, a condensation of the buccopharyngeal fascia, and we call this the pterygo mandibular raffae. And so, posterior to this pterygo mandibular raffae is going to be the superior pharyngeal constrictor. Anterior to the trigomandibular raffae will be the buccinator muscle. And so we'll see that the superior pharyngeal constrictor muscle and the buccinator muscle are going to be contiguous. They're only separated by that trigomandibular raffae, which we'll see there. And I'll show you this uh, again when we when we look at the mandible. So we we have some articulations to to look at there. So moving uh, laterally from the uh, from the sphenoid bone, uh, we have the the temporal bone. So as we as we move out this way, we're in the realm of the temporal bone, and as we move posteriorly uh, there are two elements of the temporal bone and I'm going to outline them because their contrast isn't all that great on this image. One is there and the other is there. On the lateral view uh, it's a little better so we can see there. Uh, those are representations of the styloid process of the temporal bone. The styloid process is going to be an important attachment site for uh, many muscles, but with respect to this session, uh, you want to understand that it's the superior attachment for the stylopharyngeus muscle. Recall the stylopharyngeus muscle is one of three uh, longitudinal muscles of the pharynx, and it's the one that's going to insinuate itself between the superior and middle pharyngeal constrictors as we're looking at the posterior wall of the pharynx. Um, then we have moving 
posteriorly from the temporal bone, the occipital bone, I should say posteriorly and medially, uh, we have the occipital bone. And um, here is the foramen magnum, which is a really excellent landmark for, um, for looking at the skull. Um, and anterior to that foramen magnum, located right about there, is the pharyngeal tubercle. That pharyngeal tubercle is the superior most attachment site for the pharyngeal raffae. <clears throat> so the pharyngeal raffae is that condensation of fascia that extends from the pharyngeal tubercle all the way down along the midline of the pharynx and it's where the superior middle and inferior pharyngeal constrictor muscles are able to meet one another. So that's where it uh, originates uh, superiorly. So taking a look at the mandible, which we have uh, down here, we can see this lovely, and I've included a, uh, and this is a sagittally sectioned mandible. So this is the right side of the mandible. I've also included a sagittally sectioned cranium uh, above that so that we can see uh, how these two may line up, but uh, these these do come from two separate specimens. And the, the mandible is most obviously out of articulation with the cranium. They don't sit like this normally. And so here we could see the, the hamulus of the, the pterygoid, the medial pterygoid plate there. And what I wanted to point out uh, to you all here is this mylohyoid line. The mylohyoid line is where the mylohyoid muscle attaches, and it's going to meet uh, its counterpart along the midline of the, uh, the underside of the jaw. And the mylohyoid muscle is an important muscle for the oral cavity. Um, it's going to divide the, uh, the oral cavity proper from the sublingual space. Um, and this line is important because it forms the attachment for the mylopharyngeal part of the superior pharyngeal constrictor. And this is obviously going to be exaggerated. So please excuse it, but I think that you might get this by seeing it together. So that trigomandibular raffae, which is going to be that condensation of the buccopharyngeal fascia, is going to attach that uh, medial pterygoid plate and hamulus with the uh, mylohyoid line. And so anteriorly, you know, we would have the buccinator, would be the cheek muscle and then posteriorly we'd have the superior pharyngeal constrictor and while we're looking at it in this view I can see that pharyngeal tubercle of the occipital bone there and so that raffe is going to extend down the neck like so and so that superior pharyngeal constrictor because it's also going to have a glossopharyngeal part from the tongue will occupy that space. Now as we turn our attention to the anterior view of the mandible, so this is the whole mandible, uh, so the, uh, the chin would, would be there, that's the, the mental region. Um, I want to draw your attention. This is going to be exceedingly important uh, if you have a future in dentistry to this area 
I'm not drawing this precisely out of expedience, but uh, this is the alveolar process of the mandible. There's also an alveolar process of the maxilla, and these processes are the, the thickenings of the bone that are going to surround the, uh, the sockets of the, uh, of the teeth, the roots of the teeth. So they, uh, they're what, uh, what hold the, uh, the roots of the teeth, the alveolar sockets. So from the, the same view, uh, although this is um, magnified at a much exaggerated uh, size, compared to the, the mandible that you just saw. We're looking at an anterior view of the hyoid bone. The hyoid bone is going to sit inferior to the skull and anterior to the C-spine. It's not uh, directly articulating with any other part of the, uh, the axial skeleton, but it is held in place by various ligaments and musculature. Uh, as you recall, uh, in the anterior neck, uh, there are infrahyoid muscles, which will be below the hyoid. There are also suprahyoid muscles, which are going to be above the hyoid bone. Uh, the, Hyoid bone gets its name uh, from the ancient Greek uh, hyoides, which means shaped like an epsilon. So it has somewhat of a U shape to it. And uh, there are a couple of features of the hyoid that uh, you should be aware of. There are the greater horns or cornua, which I'm outlining here. These greater horns, in the context of the pharynx, are important because they are the attachment sites for the middle pharyngeal constrictor. Also for the, uh, the larynx, so if we look laterally here, these greater horns are going to be the attachments for the lateral thyrohyoid membranes uh, that are running between the thyroid cartilage of the, the larynx and the, the hyoid bone. Then we have these lesser horns or lesser cornua here. These lesser horns are attachment sites for the stylohyoid ligaments uh, these are ligaments that run from, as you may guess uh, from our previous discussion, the styloid process of the temporal bone down to the hyoid to, to help keep that in place. Um, and I, I think that you'll see throughout uh, some of our other sessions that the, the hyoid bone is actually a very uh, crucial bone in terms of the attachments that it forms for not just the suprahyoid and infrahyoid uh, muscles, not just the middle pharyngeal constrictor, not just for supporting the, the pharynx and some other neck muscles, but also for, uh, for muscles of the tongue and of the oral cavity. So for a, for a small bone, it, it sure does do a lot. So we've We've talked briefly about some of the elements of the, uh, the skull, both the cranium and the mandible, as well as the hyoid bone and how these osteological features are relevant and give support to the, uh, the musculature and the ligaments of the pharynx and the larynx. Thank you for your time.